Dan Locke is an author, internet marketer, speaker, and is known as being the king of high ticket sales. He went from being a broke immigrant who didn't speak any English and failing at 13 different businesses to becoming a self-made millionaire. And today we're gonna learn his best advice on how you can be aware of your weaknesses. Rise and shine, it's espresso time. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I wake up every morning. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and every morning I bring you a shot of Espresso to help you believe in yourself more and start your day with confidence. So good morning, I believe in you, and let's do this. Over to you, Dan Locke. What are your weaknesses? One of the most common questions you'll get during an interview when you're applying for a job. Now, over the years, I've asked this question to so many applicants, and I am shocked by the answers. So today, I'm gonna to teach you how to answer that question properly. First, let's talk about what you don't do. So when your employer, your interviewer is asking you, so what are your weaknesses? Oh, I have none. Don't ever say that, it is a lie. You know it's a lie, I know it's a lie. Just when people say that, they just get out of here. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. When you say, I have none. And don't say, well, you know, I, I'm ne I never thought about it. Uh, no one ever asked me that. Seriously, no one ever asked you that. Maybe you think you're being smart with the, with the ply. Don't do that. It just shows you you are dishonest and also it shows you you lack self-awareness. Those are not good answers. Also, here, here are the ones I hear all the time that are also is a big no-no. I'm kind of a workaholic and, and, and a bit too much of a perfectionist. Give me a break. Don't try to turn it and, and put a positive spin on it when we, you're being asked what are your weaknesses, right? Another one I hear all the time, oh, I love people, I love working with people. Really, I don't like you that much right now, okay? That's not good, that's not what you do. So, here's how you answer it. What are your weaknesses? The key is don't make that about your personality. If you're gonna share something, make that about your skill set that you could work on. Here's what I mean by that. When you share something about your personality to an employer, it could feel like, well, I don't know if you could fix that. That maybe is who you are. But if you make it about a skill set, then it's something that you could work on. So I'll give you an example. What are your weaknesses? Well, you know, I'm, I'm more of an an introvert and sometimes I notice that I, I'm shy to share my ideas when there's a, a room of, of people. Now see, that's a good reply if you are an introvert because here's what's going through my mind. My mind is thinking, hmm, okay, this person is shy, introvert, and, and that's okay. So it means that in certain scenario, maybe I need to ask this person more to, to speak up. I can say, hey, you know what, what do you think of this? Or in my mind, I'm also thinking, well, maybe through time, once this person becomes more comfortable with everybody else within the company, she could share more ideas. See, that's what's going through my mind, right? That is fixable. Or maybe this person could go take Toastmasters and develop more confidence and work on her public speaking skills a bit. See, in my mind, all that's fixable. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. So my honest take on this is to spend less time being strategic and more time actually being honest. I think, too many times we overthink the conversation, we overthink trying to make ourselves look amazing when we're not at something, and that actually hurts you in any kind of relationship, whether you're going for a job interview or you're trying to bring on a partner or employees or in personal relationships. Because if you suck, like what's the worst thing you're gonna say? Uh, I suck with people. I'm not, I'm not a people person. Or I suck with details. I'm not very detail oriented. Like, what is actually the thing that is your weakness? Like, what is it? What are you so afraid to let people know? Because if it's that you are not very focused on details and you cover that up and you manage to get through the interview, right? You manage to get hired, you get through the interview because they didn't find out your big secret, but then you're working in a job and attention to detail is actually important to that job. What's gonna happen? One, you're not gonna get promoted. You're, you're gonna, two, hate your life. And, and three, your boss is gonna think you're an idiot. Like, you're just not gonna have a great experience, great time, great life, great career. All because back in the interview, you, you managed to hide the fact that you weren't great with details, right? Are you magically gonna get better at details now? 
Like you, you might, you could, but you won't enjoy it, right? You don't, you don't, you know, if you wanted to work on that skill and improve it, you could have done it by now. You're not good at it. You don't want to be good at it. So don't be in a job that requires it, right? I think that happens far too often. I think it happens uh, in, you know, in dating world and dating life. You're always trying to put your best foot forward and cover up all these things that you're, you know, weak at. But as soon as they discover it, the relationship could be over and you could have saved yourself six months by just being upfront with it. And so this method maybe is maybe is not the greatest path to to getting a job, to getting any job, but it's the path to getting the right job. It's not the path to getting any partnership, but it's the path to getting the right partnership or the right investor. If you go to an investor, you're trying to raise money for your business, you go to an investor and, and they ask you, what's your biggest weakness? And you are upfront to say, I suck with people or I, I'm not really attention to detail oriented. You're honest with them and they can find a solution around it to say, okay, well, it can still work, but we need to hire you uh, somebody to be in charge of people. Or we need to hire you somebody to be in charge of all the numbers and the details because this is going to be really important for this to happen. And if they're not willing to think that way and they're leaving the meeting thinking you're great with people or you're great with numbers and then you're not and then the business struggles and suffers, you got the wrong investor. If you lead with what actually is your weakness, if you're honest with it, you lead with honesty. Say, here's where I actually suck and I could use some help with and I could help have, you know, I need to have people around me to support me on these things. The right boss, the right partner, the right investor, the right relationship will appreciate the honesty. It's refreshing. It's different. Uh, and it may mean you get a lot less job offers. I'm okay with that, right? I I'm okay with that. I think, I think it's actually better. I think it leads to a lot more happiness and a lot less struggle being in the wrong crappy job or relationship or investor that you hate that may be really difficult for you to get out of. I think too many people are stuck in a career and in relationships that they hate because they were being fake right up front and then now they don't know how to get out of it. Now they're stuck in this relationship that they absolutely hate and they end up hating their life as well. Where if you were just up front and honest and said, here's where I suck, here's my weakness, here's what I don't want and here's what I do want and finding a compatible partner, investor, you know, mentor, all of it. I think you'll have more success. I think you'll be uh, a lot more happy and less hiding and less fake. So I would say stop being so strategic and be more authentic, be more you. And some people will love you and some people won't like you and that's okay. But the path to finding the people who like you is by you actually being you, because it's gonna be uncovered. It's just a choice now, do you wanna find out on day one or on day you know, 422 and then have to make a pivot again? Now I've got a special example I wanna share, but before that, here's a message from Dan Locke. Hi, this is Dan Locke. I want to share with you a lesson from Evan Carmichael's new book, Built to Serve. This section is about making money from your purpose. You have to embrace that. If you never learn how to make money from your purpose, you'll always end up needing a day job and your purpose will become a hobby. If that sounds like a great life to you, then I'm happy for you. If not, then you need to figure out a money-making model that makes sense one that is consistent, one that is significant, one that can pay you so you can quit your job and succeed to the point where you are providing jobs for others and helping even more people. You see, money is nothing more than a byproduct of value creation. The more people that you serve, the more successful that you will be. So to have long-term success is not just built to last or, or built to sell or even built to scale, it is built to serve and this book we teach you exactly how to do that. So talking about showing your weaknesses and showing your vulnerabilities and being you, how do you actually do it? Well, I've, I've done this recently on my website. So if you look at my homepage, go to evancarmichael.com, you can see my new homepage. It's very different than most people's homepages. The people that I, that I respect, that I've worked with, uh, my colleagues, the people in person development, often what do you see on their homepages? You see them being perfect, them with their, their private jets, uh, them on stage, them like jumping up and down with their with their audience, uh, them looking like they have it all figured out and perfect. And I decided to do a sharp left turn to the exact opposite, where if you look at my homepage, you'll see these cartoon pictures of, of me, of like who I am now and who I've been and who I wanna be, who I'm becoming and the fight. And on the, on the left side, it shows all the things that I've struggled with of, of being shy and having been broke and introverted and my parents took me to see a child psychologist and being divorced and all of these things that 
that I struggled with and still struggle with. And then there's pages of my story of all the things that I struggled through, of how when I was a kid, I used to hide under my desk at school. So when I was in grade school, I, I hid. I didn't pay attention to class. I hid under my desk. I had a hearing problem that was misdiagnosed or not diagnosed. And I hid under my desk instead of participating in the class. And um, my teacher thought I was stupid. Well, I wasn't stupid. I just needed somebody with a little bit more patience and to understand kind of what I was going through. And so my parents took me to see a child psychologist. And, and all of the stories along the way of, of everything I've dealt with and struggled with and what I've come through and accomplished has been because I found mentors and I learned how to get the skill. By modeling success, having a, having mentors and having that model to follow, I was able to achieve things that I wasn't supposed to be able to achieve. And so you can do it too. Like if, if I could do it, you can do it. You just need the right models, you need the right mentors, you need the right plan to be able to follow. And so my homepage, like at the, one of the headlines at the top was like, when I was eight, my parents took me to see a child psychologist or something like that. Uh, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Some people may see that and say, oh, he saw a psychologist. Oh, he's divorced. Oh, he, he was broke. Oh, all these things. And they may, they may not connect with me and they may not want to dive into my store. I'm okay with that. Like those people won't make great partners, great investors, great employees. They won't be great on my team. I don't, I don't want them around me. It's not that I'm like, you suck, stay away from me. We just won't work well together. And the people who see that and then they love it, they self-select in. They want to do more with me because they appreciate my personal story and they, there's something in that story that they can connect to. So same thing for you, whether it's a job interview, whether it's your homepage, like if you have a website that has your boring LinkedIn picture and a really boring story of how you got started, without getting into the deep emotions, you just look like another boring company. The thing that will make you win is your story and not the perfect story. The thing that you struggled with or even now maybe continue to struggle with is the vulnerability that will let people in. Nobody wants to learn from the perfect person. They wanna learn from somebody who they feel is enough like them that if you can do this, they can do it too. Because if you can write somebody off and say, well, they had it all lined up, you know, they had rich parents and they, they look beautiful and all this stuff that makes you feel like you can't do it. Meanwhile, in your story, you've been through a whole lot. You've been through a lot of chaos, a lot of problems, a, a lot of tumultuous times and you got through it. But if you don't share that story, if people don't know your weaknesses, they don't know the warts, they don't know the issues you've been through or maybe you can still continue to face right now, then people won't want to join on your bandwagon and you're missing out a huge opportunity to bring the right people in and go really far together. So my case today is for less strategy and more authenticity. I think that's how you're gonna win. Now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and how are you gonna take action on it this week? When you schedule in what day, what time, and what place you're gonna take action, you have a 91% chance of actually following through versus just a 35% chance of following through if you got motivated but never wrote down a specific plan. And when you share your plan and have accountability, you're even more likely to follow through. So in the comments below on this video right here, I want you to write down your single biggest takeaway as well as your plan of action for the next week. I don't think you get the same returns by overwhelmingly working on your weaknesses as you do on tripling down on your strengths. I don't know what else to say. Like, I re it's, it's so clear to me. I think so much of what I talk about is predicated on not only my successes, but watching my family members, watching that whole ecosystem of startup founders, uh, just watching. I watch a lot, I read a lot of like, people's behavior more so than, you know, books or things of that nature. And so, yeah, I mean, I just, I, I believe that the entrepreneurs that have gone on to quadruple down on their strengths and then hire around their weaknesses have had much better success than the ones that dwell on their shortcomings because somebody they look up to was good at it and said it was important and they waste their time on something they'll never be. Hi, this is Dan Locke. 
If you're a fan of Evan's work, if you want to know exactly how to model my success, I want to invite you to join me for a special online training. All you have to do is click on the link below. You can join me for absolutely no charge. So click on the link below and I will see you in class. If you want to change your life for free in the next 30 days, check out the program right below me. Or if you want to know how to develop your gifts with Dan Locke, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy them. Continue to believe. I'll see you there.